Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Pray First family and Pray First, a conversation with Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. It is a principle that we put God first before we read our text messages, before we check our emails, or before we you know check our voicemail, if that's still a thing. Uh, we give God the first of our day so he can set the agenda of our day. How many of you ever had, you know, listened to that voicemail early in the morning that shot your whole day or you read Messenger or you looked at your text and you're like, oh, why did I read that this morning? The first thing we need to do is have time and spend it in the presence of God, hearing his word, praying, speaking to him, talking to him and listening to him. Uh, it's a very important principle giving God first. And I am so glad that you choose, many of you do that right here at Pray First every single day. This is also an interactive conversation, hashtag live if you join us live, hashtag recorded if you join us recorded, hashtag shared. And it would be a great honor to me if you would share this out. I saw a conversation between two friends yesterday on, or the day before on Facebook. And one of the friends was saying, I'm so thankful that my friend uh, invited me to pray first. It has changed my life. So that is huge, okay? This person lives off somewhere. It, it, it was just incredible to see. It was incredible to read. And if you ever wonder, do your shares matter? Your shares absolutely matter. Let's hit some hearts. Let's hit some likes. Let's welcome all the first-time visitors. Go ahead. Pop them. I want to see a bouquet of hearts and thumbs. If you see those guys, those are for you guys, our first-time visitors. First time pray firsters, it's good to have you here. Hit them, hit them, hit them, hit them, hit them, hit them. Don't, not just one or two. Come on, get back on those thumbs and those hearts. You say, ah, somebody else will do it. You are somebody else, okay? If I could reach that thing, I'd be tearing it up right now. Thank you so much. Thank you, Barbie. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I see you, Christy. I saw you, Brenda Howard. Good job. Pop them things out there. It's not all them that I'm seeing. It's those I ain't. What's up, Chuck? Good to see you, man. Good to see you hitting those hearts, those thumbs. All right, we got to get into this today. We're talking about weaknesses. We're talking about our personal weaknesses, hashtag weaknesses. But we're talking about the strength of God. And the antidote for our weakness is grace. I want you to write G-R-A-C-E, grace. And on yesterday, we began talking about four Count them four. One, two, three, four. Four weaknesses that will cause us to walk out from under grace, living in the divine power of God, and begin to perform for other people, to try to prove something, to try to please people, to try to, uh, you know, for lack of a better word, impress people, that we walk out from under grace and we start performing to please people, to avoid criticism, okay? So I want today to go over the first two, and then I'm going to get back into the second two uh, of the four weaknesses. Number one was inability. Inability. All of us have some inabilities, some things we can't do or some things we can't do well. And it could be because we've never been taught to do them, or it could be that we're just not designed to do something like that. It's an inability. It's something that we don't do as well as someone else. The second weakness is iniquity. That is that inner sin that's been passed down to us uh, from generations, our fathers, our grandfathers, our great-grandfathers. And that's a weakness that causes us to perform and do things and try to please people. It's a place where you, you know, <laughs> you're trying to impress. You're trying to uh, you want people to think you're more than you are. You want to be, and here's some things that are not bad, but they can be. You want to feel important to the team. You want to feel needed, okay? You want to feel like, you know, you, you are a contributing member. So rather than, you know, be yourself, walk in the grace and power of God, you begin to perform uh, for love and you begin to perform for loyalty, we said on yesterday, the greatest need that we have is to be loved. Therefore, the greatest fear we have is rejection. And that holds true. I saw a lot of you really pick up on that, that phrase yesterday. So I'm going to say it again, especially if you missed yesterday. Go back on the page and watch it. It's so important. Our greatest need is love. And therefore, if our greatest need is love, our greatest fear is rejection. 
So we'll begin to perform for people in our iniquity. Number three, here's the new one for today. Here's a third weakness that will cause you to perform. It will cause you to step out from under grace. It'll start causing you to be something you're not. Number three, infirmity. Infirmity. Come on. Infirmity. That's a sickness. It could be a temporary sickness or it could be a permanent sickness. It could be temporary or it could be permanent. Paul had a sickness. Paul had, Paul had a physical sickness, infirmity, and Paul also had a soul infirmity. Okay, A spiritual infirmity is to be lost. A sick spirit is to be lost. It's a dead spirit. Once Jesus saves you, your spirit becomes alive and it is made perfect. It's where you communicate with God. It's where you worship God. But your soul can be sick. How many of y'all have ever had a soul sickness? Depression. Um, it, could be a, it could be a soul sickness in sin. It could be you know, lust. It could be unforgiveness. It could be bitterness. It could be so many things. Uh, infirmity. It could be temporary or it could be permanent. I believe Paul had a soul sickness and Paul had a physical sickness. And the reason I say he had a soul sickness is because Paul many times, oftentimes would say, you know, I was given a thorn in my flesh. I'm not sure that flesh means this body right here. I think it was in his fleshliness because he says, I don't do the things I want to do and I do the things I wished I could stop because we're not mistakers, we're sinners and we can't self-correct. But Paul also had a physical ailment. He had some sort of issue, we believe, with his eyes. Galatians chapter 4, he tells the church at Galatia, I've come to you while I'm sick, and I am so proud to say that I think any of you would have plucked out your eyes and given them to me if you could. So he may have had some sort of chronic eye problem. Uh, we're just assuming there. But it will cause you to feel weak. It will cause you to feel, you know, inabilities cause you to feel weak. I want to be strong. I want people to notice me. I want people to take, you know, know I'm a contributor. So I'll, I'll dance for them even out of my inabilities and my iniquities. I, I, I'm, I, I so want to be recognized. I so want to be, you know, important. I so want to do something huge for God. How about that one? In our infirmities and our sicknesses, and we'll begin to think, you know, I can't do this. I can't do that. If God wanted me to do this, he would fix this area of my life. If God wanted me to do that, he would, you know, give me that talent. If God wanted me, you know, how many of you ever thought, if God would fix this, I could do that? How many ever thought, if God wanted me to do that, he would have given me the gift of this? So many times, okay? So the, the, for the third one is a spiritual, you know, infirmity, a spiritual sickness. But number four, inherent weakness. This one's tough. Inherent weakness. Hashtag inherent. I-N-H-E-R-E-N-T. Inherent weakness. Come here, come here, come here. This one's going to be hard to even listen to. Uh, that's a weakness that God built into you on purpose. Woo! <laughs> That's a weakness that God built into you on purpose. Let's talk about that for a minute. Let's give some examples. Moses, God calls Moses and says, Moses, I want you to go and set my people free. I want you to go and be a mouthpiece for me. Moses, I want you to go stand before Pharaoh and tell him that Jehovah's God, and he is not. Jehovah's God, Amon Ra is not. Jehovah's God, Ramses is not. Jehovah's God, the Pharaoh is not. I want you to go and be my mouthpiece and speak to the most powerful person and the most powerful nation on earth who's held your people in captivity for 400 plus years. And Moses says, God, you've chosen the wrong person. I cannot talk. You ever felt like, you know, I can't do what God wants me to do because I don't have that gifting, whatever the heck that means, or I don't have that ability, or I don't have enough money, or I'm not educated enough. If I was just more, let me, let me tell you how many times I've used that one. That is an excuse. That is an excuse for a discontented life. That is an excuse for a discontented life ministry. That is an excuse for discontentment that I don't have. If I, if I, if I had had that, 
if I had had that advantage, if I had had, you know, that education, had I been born with that kind of money, it, had I been born with, you know, into a different family, uh, boy, if I'd have been born in that place, I'd be like this too. Or, you know, if I was grew up in church, I'd be, you know, this person here. And if I had the health of so-and-so, if I just had the health of so-and-so, I could do it. You know, I have this inability to speak well, so God's probably not going to call me to go and speak to people. If ifs and buts were candy and nuts, we'd all have a Merry Christmas, wouldn't we? God sent Moses, a person who staggered, stumbled, and stuttered into the palace of Pharaoh and told Pharaoh through Moses that God says, let my millions of people go. Woo, come on, guys. Moses says, I can't talk. I can't speak. I, I, look, if God had wanted, you know, come on, come on. Isn't it ironic? Isn't it ironic? Don't you think? It's like rain. Anyway, isn't it ironic that God calls Moses to do something that he wasn't gifted to do? Huh. Kind of blows up your spiritual gift inventory, doesn't it? Kind of blows up your personality assessment, don't it? Kind of blows up the excuses, don't it? So Moses says, I can't talk. You know what God said back to Moses? I created your mouth, boy. I created your mouth. Do you think I made a mistake when I created your mouth? Isn't it funny that Paul is accused by the Corinthians in his Beautiful ability to write a letter, but he can't talk. He can't preach. He can't speak. He didn't look very powerful, and when he walked in the room, nobody really cared. Okay? So isn't it ironic, don't you think, that God would decide, come on, that God would want to decide to send in a person to deliver folks who couldn't speak? Come on. And a person to give the message of the gospel to a person who couldn't speak. And we're out there, we upset because we don't have the tools and the resources and the gifting like brother so-and-so up there on the platform. And we don't have, you know, come here, come here, come here, come here. Do you know why God chooses people like that? Because he built inherent weakness in humankind. Woo! God built inherent weakness. I'm going to tell you something. Some of the best things that I've ever experienced happened when I didn't slick talk it, when I had nothing to do with it, when I kind of, you know, there's those times in my life and in my ministry and my career where I thought, I've got so much energy. I've got such clear thought. I can go and change the world. Woo! And nothing. And then in those times where I sat back and I didn't have much energy, I didn't have the words to say and I didn't have the answers and I didn't have an idea of direction and I just sat back and thought, God, you need to find another leader. You need to find another person. It's when God stepped in and does God's stuff. It's leaving room for God. It's addressing, understanding, and even embracing the inherent weaknesses that God has put inside of me. Not that I can't, but that he can why did God build inherent weakness in you? Come on, come on, come on. Why did God build inherent weakness in Moses? Or why did he build inherent weaknesses in Paul? Because God didn't want a slick talker to get the people out of Egypt. God wanted to get the credit for bringing the people out of Egypt. God didn't want an attorney to get the people out of Egypt. God didn't want Pastor Doug to get the people out of Egypt. God didn't want... God wanted to do it himself so that the people wouldn't say Moses is our leader, but that Yahweh, Jehovah, is our God. This is so important that we get this, that God has put some weaknesses in you. Come here, come here, come here, that you have desperately tried to fix. You have desperately tried to change. You thought, if I can just get over this, if I can just do that, if I could just figure out how to stop this, if I could get over this area, if I could get healing in this area of my life, if I could just do this, 
Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8, three times I begged God, I pleaded to God, I cried out to God, God, fix me, fix this place in my life, fix this infirmity, fix this inability, fix this iniquity, fix this inherent weakness inside of me. And God said, no, I'm not going to fix it. Matter of fact, I allow it. Some of your weakness, I programmed it into you. I will, he, God, he says, listen to me, three times I pleaded with the Lord, take this thorn away from me, take this weakness away from me, take this thing away from me. But God said to me, no, my grace, my power, my anointing is sufficient for you. For my power, God says, is made perfect in your inabilities, your iniquities, your infirmities, and your inherent weaknesses. God says, when you are weak, I am strong. That's, that's grace. That's the power to do what God's called you to do without the ability, without the health, without the sinless perfection, and without being programmed to be the superstar quarterback, yet you're throwing touchdowns. Mm. Ain't that something? Whew. Paul says, you know, I would, Paul says, I wasn't with you in persuasive words. I, I couldn't even hardly talk. I was with you in power. I was with you in the demonstration of the power of God. Come here, come here, I've got to, I've got to, I've got to give you a few more points. I gotta pray for you. God will disable an area in your life. Come here. God will disable the very area in your life that you most desperately need to fulfill your destiny. God will disable an area in your life that you most desperately need to fulfill your destiny so that you will depend on Him. God will disable an area in your life that you most desperately need to fulfill your destiny so that you will depend on him. And not your slick wit, and not your fast tongue, and not your healthy body, and, and not your great abilities. And he's not going to get you out of all your... Look, he's already saved your spirit. You're going to heaven, but he's not going to make you perfect. It's not going to happen this side of heaven. He's programmed some things inside of you that if you could change, you would. Come here, come here, come here. <clears throat> our weaknesses, our weaknesses have more potential to bring God glory than our strengths. Our weaknesses have more potential to bring God glory than our strengths. And we'll say it one more time. Our weaknesses have more potential to bring God glory than our strengths. Here's the last thing I want to share with you. I want you to think about this as we go into more grace tomorrow. If you could fix yourself, how many of you have some areas in your life or some things in your life, some stuff you're working on? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not mocking, really, I'm not. How many of you have some places in your life, some things you want to fix, some things you're working on, and you're trying to, you know, I'm going to get over this and I'm going to be better. I'm going to get over this and I'm going to do better. And once I get this, I'm going to be, you know, more powerful in my career and in my family. And in this. Come here, come here, come here. If you could fix yourself with a magic wand, let's say the scripture, if you could fix yourself with the magic wand of scripture and you waved the magic wand over yourself and you fixed yourself, come here. You would never need God again. So rather than ignoring our weakness, ra rather, rather than denying our weakness, ra rather than, you know, wishing, hoping, praying, begging for God to remove all our weakness, maybe we need to embrace our weakness admit our weakness. And like Paul said, boast in our weakness because in my weakness, Christ is made strong. My weakness makes me know I need him because everything you would change in your life, 
Come here, come here, come here. Everything you change in your life with, you know, the magic wand of Scripture and everything you'd fix and everything. Come on, come on. Everything you would change in your life is why you need God. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I pray for every person listening that you would give them a powerful revelation of your grace. Father, that you would give clarity in these areas. Father, that you would take away excuses of why we can't go stand before Senate and why we can't go stand before Congress and even the local uh, politics and, Father, why we can go to the hospitals and help people, you know, because we don't have enough education or money or resources and why we can't go do this and we can't do, do that and why we're stuck where we are and, God, why didn't you make me this? And I can't believe that person over there with all these giftings, with all these strengths and all this power and anointing, they're not doing anything, God, if I only had that. Do you know what I would do with that? God, I pray you'd give us clarity and that we would walk in our peace about who we are Father, that we wouldn't dance, that we wouldn't perform, that we would identify inability, iniquity, infirmity, and inherent weakness, and we would lean on your power because in Doug's strength, Christ is strong. Have a good afternoon. Have a good day. I love you guys. In Jesus' name, amen. Bye, everybody. Hit some hearts, hit some likes, hashtag live, hashtag shared, hashtag record, get this out of your page. This is a powerful message. If you let it sink in, you probably need to go back and watch yesterday's again and maybe even watch today's again. Maybe even start all the way back from through. Let's do this grace thing all again. Bye, guys.